When I was a little girl, I loved to read books, especially stories of women who fought, flew, and fired arms amongst men, like Joan of Arc, Amelia Earhart, and Annie Oakley. They were so passionate about following their dreams, and sometimes against strong opposition. I got a little taste of what it was like to be in the spotlight myself when I was just 13 going into the eighth grade. I was new at my junior high school. I had missed the cheerleading tryouts. So they asked me, Karen, why don't you try out for the school mascot? Before I knew it, I was Vicky Viking. It was a lot of fun, but it was also a little tough because everyone seemed to know me. Some even questioned why I was the mascot since I was so new to the school. And sometimes I began to wonder that myself. So I went home one day and I said to my mom that a few of the girls were being mean to me and asked her, what do I do? What do I say? She said, honey, don't do anything differently. Don't say anything differently. Just be yourself. And she was right. Over the course of my life, I've remembered my mother's words and they have never failed me. Be true to yourself and the path will be clear. In reading the Wall Street Journal recently, something in the editorial page grabbed my attention. Six years post-recession and yet we still have a tale of two Americas. Those of us here today live in the America that everyone dreams of and strives to achieve. But there are many in this and surrounding communities who live in an America foreign to most of us. I remember what a professor in business school once told me. Those of you in this room listening to my lecture have a responsibility to those who cannot be here because of birth, family, mental or financial reasons. His comment has stuck with me all my life. So as I pursued my career, first in public relations, then later establishing a successful business with the assistance of my partner and spouse, I tried to accept this responsibility. No matter how busy I was, I always tried to give back to the other America. When Henry and I moved to Naples eight years ago, I looked for an organization that would allow me to share my thoughts and ideas in a constructive manner. That organization was the Shelter for Abused Women and Children. It has provided me with the opportunity to give back and to learn even more about love and giving to others. I count the women in this organization among my most admired and cherished friends. So always remember, life is a journey which we usually have to walk alone. Yes, we have parents to guide us and siblings to help forge the way. We have friends to walk by our side and people we admire to mentor us. But in the final analysis, the path we follow is prescribed by the choices we make alone. The most important advice that I would like to share that has been passed on throughout my life from my parents to my teachers and mentors, the thread of how I live my life is this, lead by example, by your actions, not your words. As the old saying goes, actions speak louder than words. To make an impact through your actions, that is when leadership is truly powerful. Are you someone who follows through when you say you will? Do you set an example for others? This is how you will be perceived. Honor, integrity, character are the most important elements of a person's lasting legacy. Serve others with humility and carry gratitude, as well as stand for your principles. Inspiration is a fire that is lit by those who act. True role models and leaders move others by how they conduct their lives and lead by their actions. This is how I hope to be looked upon and to have made a difference. I would like to end with this quote. If your actions inspire others to dream more, learn more, do more, and become more, you are a leader. Thank you. The most important advice I have ever received came from my mother. She always told me to remember the phrase, there but the grace of God, go I. She felt that everyone needed and deserved help from others at some point in their life. For me, it was when I found myself a divorced mother of four, rejoining the workforce in a very competitive automotive sales industry. 
1979, I was one of only three saleswomen in the male-dominated automotive supplier industry. It wasn't easy to make a mark in the good old boys club, but with the determination and help from some strong supporters, I succeeded. My second husband and I began wintering in Naples. Harris Osborne was the love of my life and because of the successful partnership in life and in our business, we found ourselves in a position to give back to the community. Years later, my mother's advice motivated me to use the skills from my sales career to make the most important and meaningful sales pitches of my life. Serving on the board of the Boys and Girls Club of Collier County, I have been privileged to convince hundreds of successful people the importance of helping families in our community. It means so much to me to be able to help parents who, like myself many years ago, are working to support their families. Thank you. The most impactful advice that I have ever received was always be yourself, which was followed by the quote, Marianne, you are strawberry in a vanilla world. It took me time to understand what that meant, but I came to realize as the years passed that it was the one constant and powerful force that shaped me throughout my life. We all come from different cultures and backgrounds which define us and make us who we are. And as we move forward in our lives and in our careers, we need to share those unique traits, customs, values, and opinions with others. It's all about diversity, and it's valuing those differences that makes us grow and develop. I believe it's also knowing how to blend those differences that allows us to make better decisions. We all know that the decisions that we make as a team are far better than the ones we make alone. We should never fear to share our views in a positive and constructive manner. We should never feel that we should just agree for the fear of being singled out. Remember, in life, we all have different roles and responsibilities, but at the end of the day, we all add equal value. Thank you. I received impactful advice from Dr. Arnold Ross, a brilliant number theorist. Although I was only 15 when I studied with him, he was my most pivotal professor. His motto, adapted from the great 19th century mathematician Gauss, was, think deeply of simple things. As his first exercise in thinking deeply of simple things, Dr. Ross posed the question, is there a whole number between zero and one. My classmates and I answered emphatically no, based on the names of numbers. But Dr. Ross presented an elegant argument in the style proof by contradiction. I learned then the difference among immutable definitions, deceptive names, and concrete proofs, which although mathematical concepts apply to current societal issues. For example, deep thinkers of various disciplines have proven that equal rights under the law supersede any previously held name for marriage. Scientific rigor validates increased winter cold in the misunderstood name global warming and both freedom of religion and the right to privacy supplant any politician's false definition of family planning. Indeed, beneficial progress might occur if we all thought deeply of simple things. Dr. Ross's advice endures on the website banner of the ongoing Ross Mathematics Program. Thank you. The advice that has had the greatest impact on me wasn't presented as advice. It was presented as a question. 
When I was a teenager, one of the people I went to most often for advice was my father. No matter what problem I presented him with, the answer was always the same. He would listen and he would ask questions to help analyze the situation. I would inevitably ask, what should I do? And his reply was always, what do you think you should do? I was usually frustrated that he wouldn't just tell me what he thought I should do. But I slowly learned what valuable advice he had given me. He showed me repeatedly, because I certainly didn't understand it the first time, that while others often have valuable insights that we need to hear and consider, we all ultimately have to make our own decisions, whether they turn out to be right or wrong. Today, I often ask others to share their thoughts and experiences as I try to make subjective decisions. And sometimes I ask, what would you do? But I don't ask, what should I do? As a young child growing up in Columbus, Ohio, I listened wide-eyed when my father spoke of growing up during the Depression. His stories of working three jobs, digging ditches, delivering newspapers, and helping to provide for his parents and siblings seemed overwhelming to me. His stories always ended happily, however, with messages of taking responsibility for one's actions to working hard to accomplish one's goals. But the most impactful advice from this man who I admired more than anyone was that I could be anything I wanted to be. Hard work was required, of course, but that was nothing compared to the hard times and hard work my father had endured as a boy. Being anything I wanted to be required that I approach school, activities, work, and life knowing that I could tackle anything and find my own personal successes. Looking back, I see how this advice made me the person I am today, how it enabled me to have a successful career, a happy but short retirement, great happiness in founding Angels Undercover, and the greatest happiness in helping others. So when I have an opportunity to speak with our young people today, I encourage them with my father's advice to dream big, work hard, and be whatever they wish in life. For in this country, all things are possible. I was asked to speak of advice that has had an impact on me as being the youngest of four girls. I have been given advice all my life. This would be an all-day affair listening to my stories, but I have to keep this short. So here's a piece of advice that was given to me when I was to chair Magic Under the Mangroves and was unsure of my ability to fill the shoes. It came from a woman that lit up the room with her more than often funny stories. However, when she gave me this advice, she was being very serious. She, the late Penny Beatty, a veteran fundraiser. She simply put it, just remember you are not asking for yourself. You are asking for an organization that is relying on the help from the community for its support. These words, along with the importance of the Organization for Southwest Florida, a dedicated committee, as well as their incredible staff, all help reaching dream goals set for magic for many years in a row. With all the worthy charities that thrive in this tremendously philanthropic community, it is a true honor to be chosen amongst this group of women. I thank you from the bottom of my heart for this recognition. It will be amongst my finest achievements. When I was a young woman, newly married and just out of college, I had the opportunity to work in the office of W. Clement Stone, a huge proponent of the positive mental attitude philosophy. My first day on the job, I had to attend the bi-weekly salesman meeting. When I opened the door, I saw Mr. Stone at the front in a room full of grown men, all on their feet shouting, I feel happy, I feel healthy, I feel terrific. I was a little taken back at first, but as time went on and I saw the success and attitudes of all the people in the office around me, I began to believe that there was something to this philosophy for success. I learned that it was based on the concept that whatever your mind can conceive and believe, it can achieve. But only if you believe in yourself, 
If you live life to the fullest, be kind and you will receive kindness. Give a smile and you will get a smile. Be giving. The more you give, the more you will receive, and so on. I left the job and had a wonderful family, but the philosophy remains with me until this day. What resonated with me was that in order to be a truly successful person and feel good about yourself, you needed to give back. If you are blessed with things in life, it will only be more meaningful if you give back your time, talent, and treasures to those who are in need of them. I can honestly say that this philosophy has made a big difference in my life. I have been truly blessed in life with family members, friends, mere acquaintances, and powerful mentors who have given advice or, as I prefer to say, shared their wisdom with me. As we all know, words take on different meaning with different life experiences and as we develop emotionally, each stage with their defining moments. Looking back, I realized it was their actions inspired by those words that spoke the loudest. They lived their life by what they said. It was their ideals in life that were passed down to me. It was their emotional imprint, their ultimate legacy. I think about their words and actions every day as I navigate through my life and pass those ideals down to my son, nieces, and grandchildren. So, to answer the question at hand, I can leave you with these thoughts after 55 years of living them. Be true to yourself, be your best, be kind, love unconditionally and with all your heart, grab life and all it has to offer, live in the moment and plan for the future, achieve and you will make a difference.